middle of a clean food revolution. Corgetti spaghetti, cauliflower rice, quinoa, the mighty kale. We can't get enough. Or can we? A totally different food phenomenon is taking over in the high streets. And you can't see much of the corgetti here. This is where you'll find lots of curry, chips, crispy duck, pizza, fried rice, sweet and sour pork, chocolate fountains. There is so much. Hundreds of all-you-can-eat restaurants are opening every year, with one chain opening a new branch every single week. More chicken tikka, please. More chicken tikka. It's not just a meal. Uh. It's an entire experience. Please make some noise! <laughs> so stuff your lentils, your wheat, grass and couscous. The fad diet Britain really loves is beating the buffet. Because I'm British, we never give up. They always come in with a mission. I'm going to eat the house down. Welcome to the mouth-watering world of the all-you-can-eat. <sighs> we Brits spend an average of over four grand a year on dining out. But a beating out used to be for rich people, celebrities, and anyone who couldn't stand being around their own family. Now everybody wants to get stuck in. If you look at dining now, it's much more experiential. So besides great quality food, people are looking for experiences. Once, a birthday blowout meant a trip to the Trattoria, bring your own cake and candles, and pray the waiter didn't sing. But now, well now, we want the world. And we can have it, as all you can eat restaurants offer all the food on earth. And all under one roof. Look at that. I know, but I have to... Oh, no. At Flames World Buffet in Worcester, you can get 50 different meals for less than seven quid. Leicester, the culinary town best known for its crisps, now offers Moore's Live Social Dining Theatre that actually encourages you to stuff your faces. Eat more, live more, love more. Don't do it, guys. Even the Chinese buffet in St. Helens is in on the act. You can visit the food as many times as you like. Offering limitless sweet and sour chicken, pork spur ribs and that well-known Chinese delicacy, pizza. Nice. I mean, if this isn't the world we want our children to grow up in, then what the hell is? Here you go, guys. Would you like some lolly? Only one. <laughs> But for every customer, happy to enjoy a nice, gentle meal and go home. Oh, yeah. oh, table for two, please. Yes, yeah. please, yeah. There are those who really want to show the buffet who's boss. This is Chris. He's an absolute buffet monster. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one type of restaurant. It is the Eat All You Can Buffet. You getting a drink? I think really we're gonna we're we're here to eat, aren't we? We're going for a drink. Can we get like a so. jug of tap water. I like to make sure I'm full up, and I like value for money. I like variety. Combine all three. And just go to an eat all you can. To make sure customers like this can stuff their faces, across the ten branches, the Chinese buffet kitchen is primed to serve a gut busting two tons of food every night. So this is the central production kitchen. Over here we have the crispy chicken being made in the large pots. Crispy chicken, we'll do about half a ton a week across the branches. And it's the alternative to the crispy duck, where we do about one and a half tons in a week. Think of it like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, but with pork balls. And no Willy. This is a family show. Moving along, our sweet and sour sauce is a bit more popular than the other sauces. And we do it in the region of eight to 900 litres of sweet and sour sauce per week for the 10 branches. Here we have the chicken being produced. At the moment, the guys there are making a skewered chicken, which are the ones on the sticks. It's chicken breast per week, we go to about four tonnes. It's bad news for poultry. That's about 2,700 chickens every week. We're probably using the region of about 15,000 of these eggs per week across 10 branches. And of course, it is the Chinese buffet and it is a Chinese cuisine, so if we move on to rice, the most famous of all, your average car at home weighs about one and a half tonnes. So if you put two cars next to each other on a scale, that's how much rice we'll sell in a week across 10 branches. With streams of customers paying 15 quid per head for limitless meals, 
this one branch can bring in up to 12 grand a night just on food. Let's go. Let's the battle commence. Oh, there's too much choice. It's better to look round and the whole place first. Chris has two hours of solid eating ahead of him and he's got a whole game plan to help him fill his face. Look at that. That's heaven oh. on a plate. You take an initial sweep of the area because you wouldn't want to commit to something without taking a full sweep. Because you might commit to load of beef or load of chicken when round the corner they've got more expensive food. So it's tactical. Tactics, Chris. Nice. The choice in here is amazing. I'll catch up with you soon. All right, mate. But the restaurants also have a few tricks of their own. Every all-you-can-eat has a selection of foods cunningly placed to fill you up quickly. There are people who just go for the noodles and nothing else. So therefore, that's where our profit goes up. But a restaurant can't just serve noodles and rice. That'd be madness. So hidden amongst the basics is the really good stuff. Look at that. Oh, one of the most expensive items within our branch would be seafood, such as king prawns, fresh salmon, which is very nice. We have uh, squid, which is at a teppanyaki as well. And an expert customer like Chris knows exactly what he's looking for. Oh, my pizza. God, you've got roast duck here. Breasts. Look at the breast on that. Oh, my God, this is like paradise. Only a paradise is refilling the crispy duck tray every 40 minutes, Chris. Oh, my God, look at this. Glistening duck breast. That is marvellous. Mm. What's the evening buffet price? 14 quid, is it? Whatever it is, if you went to a normal Chinese and ordered this individually, we've already made our money back. Right, then. Are you getting more savoury? Oh, yeah. I am not finished with a savoury yet. 45 minutes in, and Chris has eaten four plates worth of food. It's a good start, Chris, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I would say nine times out of ten, yeah, I, I, I beat the buffet. Let's give that a ten, maybe. <laughs> George is an all-you-can-eat veteran. I've been uh, banned from one, and literally banned for nothing, for just doing my normal thing, going into an all-you-can-eat, um, and as advertised, having as much as I liked, which at the day wasn't a lot. Um, five small bowls. Lightweight. That's just a snack. George has come to Leicester, to Moore's World Dining Experience, and has opted for the 11.99 early evening sitting. Now he's on a mission to beat the buffet. I would say at this particular time, I'm feeling, you know, uh, fairly hungry, so I'd say, yeah, be scared, be scared. I'm coming in, I'm a new customer, and um, you're advertising all you can eat, and uh, I'm Mr. All You Can Eat, so, uh, yeah, bring it on. Tasked with taming this eating machine is Orna Minaj. Hello there. Welcome to more. Ah, Have you. you been before? Uh, no, I haven't, no. Let me take you to the table. OK. And we'll take it from there. All oh, right, fantastic. In a better world, Minaj have his own national holiday. It's about eat more, live more, love more, be more, try more, enjoy more, more fun, more friends, more family, and eventually more than enough. Hallelujah. Most of our food is cooked freshly in front of you. OK. You've got about 50 dishes to choose from. Wow. If you take one scoop of each, you'll look like me. OK. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, you're looking, you're looking good. Looking good. Nice and strong. You can come again, sir. <laughs> and now, as you've seen plenty of punters like George before, and he's got a whole kitchen full of tricks up his sleeve. I don't waste any time worrying about big eaters. We want our guests to eat more. They spend time eating in here, they'll drink as well. It's one of the key things in the buffet that you try and sell a drink. It's not a trade secret, everybody knows that in a restaurant, the margins in the drink are far better than the margin in the food. A glass of Coke costs the restaurant about 15 pence, but they can sell it for a couple of quid. So all Minaj has to do is flog George a few bevies and his quids in. Minaj, do your thing. What would you like to drink? I would just start off with a glass of water, please. Just some... Um, Lovely. With, ..with no ice. Enjoy. The drink will be here shortly. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Well, that didn't exactly go to plan. George is a pro, and it turns out he's got Minaj's number. The restaurant really wants you to fill up 
on pasta dishes and things like that. When I see somebody just filling up their plate with, with rice and pasta, I do think to myself, you're playing into the restaurateur's hands. There is so much. It can be like a, uh, a big boxing match. Mm. The gloves are off, my fork's in hand, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to go all the way. This super heavyweight contest is on. It's ginormous George versus manager Menage. The average guest will eat four plates of food. The most I've seen anybody eat is eight solid plates of food. Mm. An average starter plate will cost us, for raw material, about £1.30 a plate. Thanks very much. That's great. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. A main plate will cost about £1.10, £1.15. I didn't see this. What was this? If you're going for lots of their expensive items, chicken, beef, I can imagine they're going to be sweating and watching and alarm bells are going to be ringing. Mm. George has come out fighting, sticking to what he knows. He's soon on his fourth plate of chicken tikka. If I sit here too long, relax, drink loads of water, you know, I'm going to start to feel uh, full very, very quickly. So get the food down, get up there, get some more, get up there, get some more. It's probably a bit like uh, a man at the blackjack table in a casino. Um, when he starts to win and win and win, suddenly, you know, the security start uh, twitching and, and most certainly the owners are uh, borderline having a heart attack. Seconds out and plate five. And George has already eaten almost two whole chickens. What I'm doing here is breaking this chicken up. And basically, um, it saves me chewing so much. George has really come out swinging, even if he can't be bothered chewing. Either way, he's got all the menage on the ropes. When the guests eat around seven plates, I'm in trouble. 